What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about this 3025E. So the first thing let's start with is going to be the model number. So by breaking that down, when we start with that first number, this is gonna be the indicator of the family or series that this tractor is in. So here we see that we have a three on this machine. So this is going to be in that three series of tractor. Then whenever we move back to these next three digits, this is gonna be our horsepower indicator. So right here we have 025. So this tractor has a peak horsepower of right there close to 25 horsepower. And then the last letter here is going to be our trim level indicator. So like with a lot of John Deere equipment, you are gonna have such trim levels as E, M, and R. And those are going to start E with economy, M with your mid spec and then R as your top of the line tractor. So this is going to be a base model tractor that is 25 horsepower in that three series family. Since we're talking about this tractor being 25 horsepower, let's go ahead and pop open this hood and take a look underneath. And I'll also show you how to take off these side panels, show you where those different service components are. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the key from our tractor or another key that we may have with us. Come over here to the right hand side of the tractor and there is going to be this little circle right here with the picture of the tractor and the hood going up we simply need to take our key push in in that opening and then we can raise up here on the hood now once we get this raised up the nice thing is is that this hood is held in place by a couple of gas shocks back here so you don't have to worry about this hood falling down on you when you're doing any work underneath now if we want to take off the side panels on either side you're going to see these two yellow tabs right here these are going to be push and twist tabs so to remove those we simply need to push in and turn counterclockwise on those and that is going to release them just like so then once we have those released and we can pull out and up and then we can do that on both sides here to get this engine completely opened up where we can see all of those service points so now let's go ahead and talk about those certain service points first thing that we'll point out is here at the front of the tractor we are going to have our two headlights once we have the hood raised up we can easily get to the back of those if we need to change those we're also going to have our battery right down here in front down below our overflow tank here for our radiator now this may look like a complete pain to get to and i can tell you that it's not as bad as it looks i actually have a video on how to change out these batteries on a three series that i'll drop down in the description section below so make sure to go check that out so like i said we do have our overflow tank here for our radiator and then right behind that we do have our radiator and then moving back here we are going to have our air filter assembly right here over here on the left hand side not going to be too many actual maintenance items but you are going to have such things as your alternator here you're also going to have your starter right down here so just so that you know where those things are that is what you're going to see on the left hand side now once you move over here to the right hand side you are going to have most of your normal service points so for one we are going to have a fuel filter right here up top then if we look directly below it we can see another fuel filter here that is going to have a shutoff valve and then in between those we are going to have our engine oil dipstick then if we look on down below this plastic panel here is where our oil filter is going to be and then moving back towards the front of the engine we're going to see this orange cap here that is going to be for for our engine oil fill. Now on these tractors, it's gonna be very uncommon that you get one without a loader as these are going to be the little compact utility tractors that most people are using the loader as their primary implement. So the loader that's gonna come on these machines is a 300E loader. Now some of the specs on this is going to be that it is going to have a maximum lifting height of 84 inches. You're also going to have a max lifting capacity at the pivot point, which is right here at the back of the bucket of 1185 pounds. And then if we move out 500 millimeters or right around 20 inches, which is the spec that you'll see in the book, that lifting capacity is gonna drop down to 845 pounds. We have to keep in mind that as we move away from the actual boom of the loader, that lifting capacity is going to go down to make sure that you stay safe and stay balanced. Now, make sure that if you are going to be getting close to that lifting capacity that you are looking into putting some sort of rear weight on this machine whether that be 
filling your tires with fluid or putting rear wheel weights on this machine or maybe even a ballast box any of those options are, is going to be great but make sure that you're doing this if you're going to be using this to its maximum capacity now while we're talking about fluid in the tires let's talk about the tire options that you can get on this machine now a lot of times what you're going to see is the r4 industrials like we have here this is going to be a good mix between a and an ag tire and a turf tire we're going to have that bar tread pattern on it but it's going to be a little flatter not near as aggressive so it's easier on grass and things whenever you're using this machine but you do have the option of going with that full ag tire that r1 ag tire and you also have the option of going with a turf tire just depending on the application that you're going to use this machine just know that you do have all three of those tire options for your machine all right so now let's move to the rear of the tractor here and talk about some of the features that you're going to see now this is going to look like your normal tractor back here at the rear so some of the things that we are going to have we are going to have a category one three-point hitch with a lifting capacity of 1,356 pounds. So if, when you are looking at putting rear implements on this machine, say you're wanting to put such things as a rear mower or maybe a box blade or a rear blade, whatever those things are that you're gonna be putting back here, just remember that your lifting capacity is 1,356 pounds. Now, the other thing with that is that we are probably going to be putting implements on this machine that are going to need to use a rear PTO. So you are going to have a 540 PTO shaft back here that's going to put out a right around 17 and a half horsepower so keep in mind that any implement that you're getting has to be within that horsepower range so whenever you are looking for those different implements 1356 pounds on the lift 17 and a half horsepower at the PTO. Now you're also going to have on most machines an adjustable drawbar. Make sure that if you are going to be pulling those implements that you need a drawbar, that that is something that's included with your machine, but most of them are going to be ordered with a drawbar and it will be adjustable to those different lengths. Now also back here at the rear, some other things to point out. At the rear here is going to be where our fuel tank is. This is gonna be a seven and a half gallon diesel tank. It's going to have a wide opening there on the left hand side with the fuel gauge right next to it so if you need to look at that fuel gauge while you're on board it's just an easy look over the shoulder to the left to be able to see that fuel gauge you're also going to have flashers up here on our rollover protection system so if you are traveling down the road need to put those hazard flashers on you do have those and you're going to have those rear lights and also you're going to have this smv or slow moving vehicle symbol mounted directly onto that tank to make sure you are highly visible to people while you're on the road now some things about this three-point hitch that we didn't mention is it is going to be adjustable so your top three point link is going to be adjustable you're also going to be able to adjust the tilt over here with your right hand lower arm so if you're needing to put that rear implement on and have a little bit of a tilt to it you can adjust that here and then you're also going to have these sway links here that you can adjust also to make sure that your three point isn't getting wobbly and running into those tires whenever you're using those now you're also going to have two of your main maintenance points back here at the rear we're going to have our hydrostatic transmissions hydraulic oil dipstick over on the left hand side and then on the right hand side is where we're going to have that hydraulic oil fill all right so now the part where you are going to spend most of your time let's talk about the operator station so over here on the left hand side first thing that we're going to have is a footstep right here to get up and in to the operator station then we're also going to have the floor mats in a smooth opening all the way across here so make to make it easy whenever you are driving this machine where there's not that center hump that's in your way so once we get up and into the machine let's go ahead and start talking about our controls and features so over here on the left hand side first thing that we'll point out is we do have a storage cubby right here now this is oftentimes where we're going to find our operator manual but you can take that out of course put tools or whatever you need to into that cubby that is for you to use at your own disposal now also over here on the left hand side this is where we are going to have our gear selection so we can see we have a high neutral and low now this is going to be the only gear selector that you have on this machine is this is going to be a hydrostatic transmission that's driven just with two pedals and then we're also going to have our throttle which we'll get to in a minute and then this one gear shifter over here to the left now moving down from that we are going to have a parking brake right here this is going to be a normal hand style parking brake that we pull up 
to set the parking brake, push the button in and release it to release that parking brake. And it is as simple as that. Then right below that next to it is gonna be our four wheel drive engagement. That's gonna be this T handle here where we simply pull up on that T handle to engage the four wheel drive, push that T handle down to put that into two wheel drive. And then moving up in front of that is going to be our brake pedal. This is going to be a two way function pedal here. So this is going to be a differential lock and then a full brake. So if we see the sticker over here to the left of the pedal, it tells us if we only push that brake in part way, it is our differential lock. If we push it in all the way, it is going to be a full on brake. So keep that in mind whenever you're using this machine that if you are only partially pushing on that brake, what that's gonna do is activate both of those rear wheels where they're turning at the same time, interlocking that differential to make sure that you are getting out of those sticky situations. Now, moving up here onto the dash, very simple controls. Over here to the left, we are going to have our two flashers that we can hit right here. Then we're gonna have a menu button here. This is going to go with our electronic display up on the screen which I'll show here in a minute then we're going to have our hazards button here which is going to allow both of those flashers to go at the same time then we have our light switch right down here then our key switch is going to be right here in the middle underneath the steering wheel we'll go ahead and turn that on so you can see what that display panel looks like a little hard to see here in the sun but what you're going to have here is you are gonna have engine hours showing normally right here. Then if we push our menu button that we just talked about, we can go to different things, vehicle hours, PTO hours, back to engine hours. Now what you're also gonna have is an RPM gauge here and then also a temperature gauge right up here to let you know what the temperature of that engine is. Now over here to the right is where we're gonna have our throttle here. So this is just gonna be a hand adjusted throttle where we can raise this up or lower this down. And like I said, that is gonna go hand in hand with our gear shift over here to the left and then also with our pedals over here to the right. So with this being a hydrostatic transmission, you are not having to clutch and switch gears once you get this machine turned on get that parking brake turned off to be able to make this machine go forward and backward all we have to do is push here on these twin touch pedals very very easy we can leave our heel resting on the floor move back and forth from those pedals super easy to use that machine. Now, moving up from those, you are going to have your loader joystick if you have that loader installed on this machine. If not, this may not be here, but what we're gonna have on this is we're gonna have a sticker that shows the controls of the loader. You're also gonna have a loader lock and unlock. So right here, if we push this in, that is going to lock the joystick to where it can't be moved. If we pull this out, then we're able to freely move that joystick. Now, the point of this is gonna be a safety feature that if you are working underneath that machine and you have that loader raised up, you wanna make sure and always lock out that lever just to make sure somebody doesn't come by and bump it and accidentally let that loader down, just like what we saw there. So if we have that locked out, that can't move. Now, keep in mind that those hydraulics could still possibly have an issue of failing and coming down. So I highly suggest if you have to do any work underneath that loader that you do have some sort of locking mechanism that physically will lock that loader up and into place before doing any work underneath of it. Now, moving over here to the right, we are gonna have our three-point selector. So we have this lever right here that we can simply pull back or push forward. And this is gonna raise our three-point either up or down. And then we have this locking mechanism here that we can flip up. We can set that to a certain desired height lock that back down and then that way every time we push forward on our three point we can drop down to that same height right there then moving up here on to the right hand console we're going to have our pto engagement switch now this is going to be a three-way rocker switch so we're going to push one time to turn that on that's going to send electricity to that rear pto but then to actually activate it we have to push down and hold that will turn that pto on and then to turn it off it's as simple as flipping that switch back into the off position now right next to that switch we're going to have two openings here where we can pop these out add in extra switches maybe we're adding extra lights or we're adding such things as maybe a sprayer at the back where we want to have a switch right here at the hand you do have two different openings here then you're also going to have a 12 volt outlet here that you can plug in those chargers or whatever things you may need here on board 
Then we're going to have a small storage area here and then also a cup holder. And then keep in mind also you are going to have a seat belt on this machine. So if we are in those situations where we need to stay safe, if we're going to be on a hillside or any type of slope, we want to make sure that we are putting on that seat belt. And we also are going to have our ROP system here. Now ROP stands for rollover protection system. And as you can see, this is in the up position, but you can fold this back if you're going to be in those situations where you're going to have low lying trees, you're trying to get into that barn that has a low hanging door, whatever those things are, you do have that folding mechanism to where you can change this to where this is not all the way up and into position but where you can fold that back now while we're on here we'll go ahead and start this machine up so you can hear how it sounds we want to make sure that whenever we are starting this machine that we are in neutral have that parking brake set turn the machine on once we have that on i've got that at a low idle i'm going to go ahead and lower down my parking brake here make sure it's disengaged and the next thing that i'm going to do is go ahead and get my loader raised up now we talked about this loader having a height of 84 inches i'll go ahead and raise this loader all the way up just so that you can get a good visual of what that looks like we have full tilt of course here of the bucket where we can fully dump that raise that up lower that back down now I talked about how easy it is to drive one of these machines. So from right here, I'm gonna reach over, put this machine in high, then I'm gonna go over to my pedals and simply push forward to go forward and then backwards here to go backwards. Very, very easy to use this machine. Of course, it is going to be power steering. So I can simply drive this with very, very easily move that steering wheel to move this machine. This is going to be one of those machines that if you are looking for a learner tractor, if you are new to the market, this is going to be a great option for you to look into as it is going to be simple for you to operate, but also have the capabilities of doing what you need to do. Now, last but not least, let's talk about price and warranty. This is going to be a big factor whenever we're looking into these machines. Now, as of 2023, if we go on deer.com onto their website, look at the price of this machine. This is probably going to be priced without the loader. So make sure that whenever you are looking into these machines and you're getting those prices, if you want that loader, that that is is included in that price but if we're looking at this price online this machine is going to go for $21,900 right around in that area now keep in mind that is list price and whenever you are pricing these tractors out you want to make sure that you're going to the dealership asking about any deals that may be going on any incentives that John Deere might have out right now any type of discounts that you may qualify because for because there are going to be different discounts that you may qualify for in certain situations. So ask about those. And then also ask about the financing on these machines. Oftentimes, John Deere is going to have a really low interest rate, maybe even zero on some of these machines. So if you don't want to spend that money out of pocket, make sure that you are asking about the finance options. Now, whenever we're talking about warranty, this machine is going to have a two year, 2000 hour bumper to bumper warranty covering everything from the front of the machine to the back. And then it's also going to come with a 72 month or 2000 hours, whichever comes first on the powertrain. Now that's going to be for the engine and the transmission. So the big two main functioning areas of this machine, engine transmission covered for six years, 2000 hours, and then bumper to bumper is the two year, 2000 hours. Now, if you want to make those match up or you wanna to add to that bumper to bumper, you can do that. Just make sure and talk to your salesman. They can add that additional warranty onto this machine for just a little extra cost. And I can tell you one thing that it is really cheap and easy to add warranty to these machines. So definitely look into that. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you're needing parts for any of your John Deere equipment, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.